Hi everyone, this is Marcus with DTF Station, and in this video, we will go over the initial setup and installation of the Prestige R2 DTF printer. Since this will be an extensive process, we will split this video up into three chapters. Chapter 1 will be the printer assembly and ink charge, Chapter 2 will be the software installation and setup, and Chapter 3 will be the printhead adjustment. Chapter 1, Printer Assembly and Ink Charge First, make sure to have the following tools ready. A set of Allen keys, a snap blade, a Phillips screwdriver, and a pair of scissors. You will also need a full set of ink and a roll of DTF that you plan on using. Now take your snap blade and open up the printer box. The first thing you will see is the user manual. Make sure to take that out. Next, you will see the power cord, the dampers, additional tools, ink filters, and tubes, the ink diverter, a USB dongle with the printing software, ribbon cables, a set of different size screws, and two feed roller components. If you are missing any of the items listed, immediately contact your representative at DTF station. Now take the top foam insert and lift it up and away to reveal the printer. Pull out this feed system component, then, with at least two people, carefully lift the printer up and out of the box, and onto a sturdy table top. Disclaimer, do not throw away the box that the printer came in. It is also important that throughout this installation process, any additional parts should not be thrown away and be placed into the box for storage. First, you want to place this waste tank on the floor, or at least at a lower position than the height of the printer. This is to ensure that gravity assists in disposing of the waste ink. This will also prevent any clogs from ink backing up into the waste tube. Now take the component that you pulled out of the box and place it behind the printer as shown. Find the appropriate bolts, and using an Allen key, secure the component onto the printer through these eight holes. Make sure to partially install all eight bolts first before tightening all of them. Now find these two feed roller components that were stored in the top foam insert from earlier and secure them onto these two rods as shown. Note, pay close attention to the orientation of both components. You may need to loosen these knobs in order for both components to be able to slide onto the rods. Center these two rods, then tighten these four to secure their positions. Now it's time to load the media. First, identify which side of the film is the printing side. Make sure the printing side of the film is facing up and insert the media roll against the left side bracket first. Align the left side of the roll to the left side of the media feed opening at the back of the printer. Tighten the left bracket by rotating the knob clockwise, then slide the right bracket into the center to secure the media roll, then tighten the knob by rotating clockwise to secure the position. Now head to the front of the printer and remove all the visible tape. Then open the front lid and remove the tape on the printer bed. And also remove this plastic lining near the printer rail. You will also see this carriage lock above. Please use a Phillips screwdriver to remove these their screws. Then carefully remove the bracket along with this tag. Note, make sure not to throw the bracket away and store it with the additional components and the printer box as this bracket is needed if you ever need to transport the printer to a different location. Once complete, with the bracket removed, place the bolts back into the carriage as shown. Now take the power cord, place it into the printer, plug the opposite side into an outlet. Switch the power on the back to the on position. Make sure the top emergency button is released. If the screen on the printer shows status idle, then this indicates that the unit is ready to proceed with the installation. At this time, turn the printer back off using the power switch in the back. Once the printer is off, take a Phillips screwdriver and remove these two bolts on the top of the lid. This will allow you to fully open the top cover. Now open this front cover and rotate this knob counterclockwise. 
Keep a close eye at this opening. As you rotate the knob, you will see the capping station detached from the printhead. Make sure that this wiper blade is lower than the carriage before shifting the carriage to the left. Now, we will remove the cover to the motherboard. Take a Phillips screwdriver and loosen these two on the right side of the cover as shown. Then head over to the left side and loosen these three screws. Once all the screws have been loosened, carefully lift the lid upwards to remove. Next, we will remove the lid to the printer carriage. Start by loosening these two screws on the left side. Then loosen these two screws on the right side and then lift the cover upwards to remove. Next, we will prepare to perform an ink charge. Start by giving each of your ink bottles a 5 to 10 second shake. Give your white ink specifically a 15 to 20 second shake and make sure to let it rest for at least 5 minutes in order to let the bubbles form settle down. Keep the front lid open so that you can visually inspect the ink tubes leading to the print head. When filling up the ink containers up with ink, you should not see any ink flowing towards the print head. If you do see ink heading towards the print head, quickly clip the tube to stop the ink. This may indicate a bad damper and we recommend contacting a DTF station team member immediately. Next head to the side of the printer and open the lid to the ink containers. Open the cap to each container, one at a time, and fill the container in with ink. Note that each of the caps show what color ink to pour in. A new bottled ink is usually 1 liter. Each of the ink containers on the printer are also 1 liter. For each of the CMYK containers, we recommend filling up the container about 40 to 50%. For the white container, pour in the entire 1 liter. When you close the cap back onto the ink containers, first tighten the cap all the way, then loosen the cap a quarter turn to allow for some air to flow in. If, after you have completed filling up all the ink containers, you confirm that no ink has flown towards the printer or the dampers, that means that all of your dampers are in good condition, and you may proceed to the next step. At this time, turn the printer back on using the switch at the back. If there are no issues, the printer carriage should move back in and secure itself onto the capping station. Now go to the right side of the printer and open the side panel. This knob controls the white ink circulation. At this time, rotate this knob all the way clockwise until you hear a clicking sound. This will turn the white ink circulation on. You may now close the side panel. Now head over to the front control panel. First click menu, then press the down arrow three times until you get to head maintenance. Then click enter, then press the down arrow twice to get down to fill ink, then press enter. Leave the selection on two head, then press enter to start charging the ink. Since we use a heavy water-based liquid to protect the print head from drying out with residue, you will need to allow the ink charge to continue for at least two minutes, which will use up about 500 milliliters of ink. By allowing the ink charge to go for at least two minutes, this will ensure that the protective film on the printed is fully penetrated. Once complete, click the cancel button to stop the ink charge. Next, click the cleaning button to start a head cleaning. Once that is complete and the screen shows status idle, go ahead and perform two more head cleanings by clicking the cleaning button. This will help remove the excess ink inside the waste tube, pump more ink through the printer and perform additional wipes on the printhead. During this process, make sure that you can visually confirm that the wiper blade is making proper contact with the printhead. If not, we will need to manually adjust the height of the wiper blade. Next, head over to Waste Tank and press this button to turn on the Waste Ink Container Alarm System. This will help notify you when the Waste Ink Container needs to be emptied. Now head over to the back of the printer, pull some extra film from the media roll, root the film under this bar before inserting it through the printer. Lift this handle in order to lift the media rollers, allowing for the media to move through the printer. Make sure to have these media guides pushed away all of the sides so that they are not in the way. Now with the film positioned as shown, with your other hand, pull the roll in the back taut and use this method to position the media in a straight line coming from the media roll. Once the media is in position, pull this handle back down to bring the media rollers down so that the media is now secured. Now bring these two media guides back towards the center, just enough to cover the top of the film. 
You do not want the guides to push up against the film too tight. These are only here to prevent the film from lifting which could cause a head strike. At this time, turn the ink alarm system on by using this switch. A blinking light will indicate that a container is low in ink. Refill the ink as needed as a large amount of ink will be used during the ink charging process. Now open the right side panel again and turn this knob counterclockwise all the way, but right before you feel it click. Once complete, close the panel again. Chapter 2, Software Installation and Setup Note, all of the files in the following steps may be found in the USB dongle that came with your printer so make sure to check there first. There will be two main softwares that you will be installing and setting up. Hosensoft is the software that controls the printer. You can perform head cleanings, nozzle checks, and more fine adjustments with the printer on this software. The second is Digirip which is your RIP software. This will be used to upload your artwork, size it and position it on the film, and finally print your artwork onto the media. Alright, let's begin. Now we will install the Hosen software. You should have received a quick start guide PDF titled Redmi First or 2, version 4.pdf. If you did not receive this file, make sure to reach out to the DTF team to inquire. Open this PDF. On number 3, you will have a QR code to download and install the R2 Hosen software. This QR code will take you to a Google Drive with multiple different files. Make sure to download the Prestige R2 Hosen software and also download the Prestige R2 Digirip file. If your computer does not have software to unzip files, go ahead and download the 7-Zip Extractor. This is a free software that we provide that you can use to unzip files. If you're going to use the 7-Zip Extractor, after all files have been downloaded, head over to your Downloads folder and double-click 7-Zip Extractor to open. Then right-click the Prestige or 2 Hosen software, then click Extract All to unzip the file. Once this window opens, click Extract to begin extraction. Once the file has been unzipped, it will open the folder in a new window. Scroll down and locate printexp.exe and double-click this file. In this new window, click More Info, then click Run Anyway. Your firewall may try to block the installation. Click Allow Access. Note, instead of the software opening, if you are getting errors repeatedly, head back to your USB dongle or Google Drive folder, locate this file, vc underscore x64.zip, then download and install the file. Once completed, you should be able to open Hosensoft again. When Hosensoft is open, the tax characters may look like this. Before we change the language, we need to secure a connection between the printer and the computer first. Make sure by this step, the printer is connected to the computer via Ethernet cable. If your computer does not have an Ethernet port, you will need to purchase a separate adapter in order to make the connection. The connection must be direct and cannot pass through a router, splitter, or Ethernet switch. When you see this icon, blink, red, this indicates that you do not have a proper connection with the printer. If this icon is blinking red, follow the steps on the screen. Click on this button, then go to this tab on the left. Then click this button, which should be the only button you can click on this page. Once you click that button, a new window will open. Go to Ethernet and open the drop-down list. Select Ethernet option. At this step, you may encounter multiple Ethernet options. In this case, go into Windows and go to View Network Connections. Remove a cable one at a time and check to see which Ethernet cable connection turns off. This will help you narrow down to which Ethernet cable is the one connected to your printer. Next, go to the IP address section and enter the following IP address 192.168.127.58. Please double check that you have entered the IP address correctly. Here for the first three digits, we have intentionally put in the wrong three numbers, 196, to show you what happens when the incorrect IP address is entered. The icon on the bottom left is still blinking red, which indicates that the connection is still not properly set up. 
Once we go back and correct the first three digits to 192, then click this button, then this button to confirm. Once the correct IP addresses is entered, this icon will now be a solid green, indicating a solid connection with the printer. If all steps have been performed correctly, but you are still getting a flashing red icon, first check that the printer is powered on, then check the Ethernet cable connection, and if neither of these variables fixes the problem, contact the support team. Once complete, close the window. And now select the second button from the top. Go to the second tab on the new window, and in the drop-down list, select English, then click this button to confirm. Click OK. Close the window. Click this button. Click this save icon to save all settings. Right-click the Hosen Soft icon on the bottom, and pin the software to the taskbar. Then close the program. Click this button to confirm the close action. Now reopen the software, and this program should now be in English. Check this icon again to make sure the connection with the printer is still live. Next, we will set the margins for the film. They should be done every time a new roll of film is loaded into the machine. Click on setting on the very top, and you will see this option for X margin. If you look at the printer, you'll see this ruler on the top. You will use this ruler to decide where your X margin should be set to. If you look here, the film's edge is at 2 cm or 20 mm. To give it some room, you should set it to a minimum of 25 mm, but we're going to be extra cautious here and set the margin to 40 mm. Next, head over to the Auto Jump White section, go to Type, in the drop-down list, select Together. For the explosion setting, we can leave this at 80%, but can bump it up all the way to 100% depending on necessity. Now head over to the color bar, setting category, go to mode, then select off. Next, go to common setting category, or auto clean, select clean flush. Now on the top right, select the icon to save the settings. Now go to your downloads folder, and double click the digirip file to install. Now follow us on screen to install the RIP software. In this window, click Install Printer, make sure to select Prestige R2, then click OK. Click Next. Wait for everything to install, then click Next again. For the port setup, select TCP IP. For the IP address, we will use a dummy address. Type in the following, 127.0.0.1. You won't have to change any other settings on this page. Now click OK. Click Next. Click Finish. Now we will need to check for updates and update the license file in order to get your Digirip software up to date. Head over to Digirip, go to Help, click Check for Updates. In the new window, click Next. Here it shows no update available, but if you do have an update, go ahead and install the update. Once finished, click Close. Once you install the update, make sure to go back to Help and click Update License File. If you skip this, the new update you installed will not take effect once complete. Click OK. Restart the software. Now go to Queue, Manage Queues. Go to Port and select TCP IP. Even though we have already done this in the previous step, sometimes the settings will revert to default. Click Close. Now we will check the queue properties. Click on Regular Films. The print mode should be set to Production Res, DTF Station Universal Film. Before moving on, let's go over the different print modes. Production Res is recommended for bold colors and solid images. Speed Res is recommended for draft mode printing. White graphic will only print white. Print vibrant white colored artworks at fast speeds using the setting. Now click on Media Setup in the left navigation bar. This will show the current film with setting. If you're using 13 inch wide DTF station universal film, then it should be sent to 13 inches. Note, even if the roll is 13 inches wide, our print is limited to 12.5 inches wide due to the margins that are required. If you need to create custom media, click on the three dots here to create your own custom media with custom measurements. To create the custom profile, click this plus icon, choose your width, measurement, and make sure to provide at least half an inch for margins. Now close this window and go to Layout Manager on the left navigation bar. Let's go over some of the settings on this page. 
If you have this checked, all of your jobs will automatically be mirrored. For your layout mode, AutoNest will automatically place your artwork on the media in a way to reduce as much media wasted as possible. Note, this will disregard the image input sequence. If this is not what you want, change this to manual. These two options should already be checked. Make sure not to uncheck these. Moving on, the spaces between jobs and copies are set to half an inch. Feel free to increase this as needed, as more space will make it easier to cut the separate prints from each other. Now head over to Color Layer and select Processing Options. Under the White and Color Options tab, note Maximum Ink Percentage. We recommend starting with a default 40%, but depending on your print quality, you may increase this in order to make the white portions of your artwork more opaque. Our recommendation is to increase or decrease this percentage in increments of 5% until the desired results is reached. The next setting to go over is Choke to Prime. This is a good setting to use when you are having issues with weight under peeking out on the edges of your print. There are three possible solutions to this issue. The first option is to increase the choke by using this setting. Raise it in increments of 1 until the desired result is reached. The second thing you should check is the quality of your artwork. To test this, try printing two other artworks and see if the same issue is consistent across all three prints. The third issue could be a headspace alignment issue, which we will go over in chapter 3 of this video. We do not recommend changing anything under the CMYK color adjustments section as it can change how the colors are represented and printed, also known as color representation. Now let's go over under base strength, white under black. This is currently set to 50%. This means that it will use 50% of the maximum ink 40% whenever it is placed under any black portions of your print. We recommend leaving this alone unless you are having issues with ink bleeding on the film. If you have this issue, you can bring this value down as low as 20%. Now head over to the side navigation bar under other, click on costing. Here you can adjust the material cost of your prints to get an accurate estimate of how much each print cost. We have already inputted for you accurate values based on USDTF station pricing. As needed though, you may change any of these values to work with your business. Let's go over the different settings. Material cost is referring to your film. Surface treatment cost is referring to the hot melt powder used. Inks are obviously referring to your ink cost. Below that, we did not add any calculations for labor cost, etc., since that would be specific to your business. Now, before we print anything, we need to do our printhead adjustment. Chapter 3, Printhead Adjustment. Before we start any adjustments, you need to perform a nozzle check. You need to make sure 90% of your nozzles are firing before performing any type of printhead adjustment, headspace adjustment, color adjustment, or bidirectional adjustment. Please note, the XP600 heads are not going to give you 100% nozzle checks. Nozzle check patterns from these printheads will always have some nozzles not firing due to air bubbles. When printing in production resolution, breaks in the nozzle check are allowable up to 20%. During the step, make sure to check the waste tank. The tank should be at a level below the printer, and the waste tube should not be in contact with the waste end. Now press the menu button on the front control panel. Press the down arrow button until you get to head maintenance. Then press enter. Then press the down arrow key again until you get to head status. Then press enter. This will print a nozzle check pattern for you on your media. If you see any breakages like we do here, head back to the control panel and press head clean to perform a head cleaning. Once the head cleaning is complete, go back to the menu system to head maintenance. Head status and press enter to print another nozzle check pattern. If you are getting at least 90% of the nozzles firing, you may proceed to the printhead adjustment. Here are some rules for cleaning if you're having issues with your nozzle check pattern. If you are getting around 50% of the nozzles not firing up on all channels, you can perform a full length for 20 seconds, then perform two head cleanings. Again, once you reach 90% of the channels firing, you're good to go. Now let's begin the print head adjustment. 
On Hosensoft, go to Adjust on the top. Click Step Adjust on the left. Under Base Step, click Print Adjust. This will have the printer print two lines. Under the lines, there will be a scale going from minus 10 all the way to plus 10. Your goal is to find the number at which two lines converge into one. Here we will be using a digital microscope, but if you don't have one of these, a good technique to use is to take a picture with your smartphone and zoom in on the picture. As you can see, when you get closer to minus 10 or 10, the lines start to separate even more so we clearly know those two are not the answer. As you get closer to zero, two lines converge into almost one perfect line. After analyzing, we can confidently say one would be the answer here. Two lines converge into almost one perfect line. After analyzing, we can confidently say one would be the answer here. Let's head back to the software and next to print adjust, let's put one, then click calculate, click save. If you'd like to reconfirm that you put in the correct value, you can click print adjust again. If the single line is at zero, then you have done this step correctly. Now let's perform a headspace adjustment. Click headspace on the left navigation bar. Since this printer has two print heads, we have to make sure the two heads are aligned properly. In order to align them, we will first perform a left horizontal unidirectional adjustment, then perform a right horizontal unidirectional adjustment, then lastly, perform a vertical adjustment. Note, we will always adjust H2, never adjust H1. Keep this as a note as you move through this procedure. H1 is CMYK, H2 is white, left is CMYK, right is white. First, let's start with the horizontal left adjustment. Click Print Adjust. This will print a new pattern with values ranging from minus 12 to plus 12. Before we begin, once again, we would like to remind you that the microscope is not necessary. Our recommendation is to take a picture of the patterns with your phone, then zoom into the photo that you took in order to see the fine details. Each bar will be made up of a white bar and a black bar. Your goal is to find and identify the number at which the two bars line up the best. If you look at positive 12, you can see that the white and black bars are far apart from each other. If you look at zero, you can see that the bars are much closer together, but still not perfectly aligned. You can also take a look at the cheat sheet above. As you can see, the white arrow is pointing slightly to the right of the zero, which means the white has to move slightly to the left. So now let's look at positive one. As you can see, the two bars line up perfectly. So for this step, the answer will be positive one. Let's head back to the software. So instead of inputting just positive one, you will actually have to add this number to the existing value. So minus one plus positive one equals zero. Now, make sure to click the save icon on the top right to save your new settings. Just to make sure, we will click print it just on the left distance one more time. After examining the new pattern, we can still see that 1 is better than 0, but not by much. So instead of moving its an entire increment, we will add 0.5. 0 plus 0 0.5 equals 0 0.5. Now click the save icon again. Now let's work on the right distance. Click print adjust. Once the pattern is printed, this time, try heading up to the cheat sheet first. The white arrow is a lot further to the right than it was when we did the left adjustment. This means we have to move the weight over a lot more than we did before, so we can easily skip 0 and 1 and start looking further to the right. Pretty immediately, we find that the best aligned bars are either 3 or 4. Head back to the software, the value is minus 3. Here we chose to go with 4, so the current value minus 3 plus the new value 4 gives you a value of positive 1. If you come across something this close, you can always add a value between like 3.5 instead of 4. Go ahead and save again, and let's check it one more time by clicking Print Adjust. Looking at 0, you could tell it's almost perfect. We could have gone with 3.5, but this is still very good, and we can leave it this way. Now let's perform a vertical alignment. Click Vertical up top, then click Print Adjust. This pattern will look different. Here you have horizontal lines that move vertically. You'll see both black and white horizontal lines. You are looking for the number at which the black and white horizontal lines line up the best. 
when you go to zero, you can see that the white and black lines are not aligned. If you look at minus two, this looks very good. Now let's head back to the software. The current value is 440.5. Our new value is minus two. Minus two plus 440.5 equals 438.5. Now click save. Always double check the vertical as it can slightly change. As you can see, zero is perfectly aligned. You can also double check by looking at this white arrow on the left and seeing if it is aligned with the horizontal line next to the zero. One note here, sometimes you may be missing some lines as shown here. This means that some of your nozzles are not firing. This is okay as long as you have additional other lines that you can reference. Okay, now we will do a color adjustment. Click color adjust on the left navigation bar. Click left adjust. Right after the printer prints, channel 4, immediately press the pause button on the control panel of the printer. Now, the printer will print a rather large pattern. Take note that horizontal rows show the different channels, and the vertical columns are your values ranging from positive 8 all the way to minus 8. The objective here is pretty much the same as the previous adjustments. Do you want to find the number at which the color bar and the black bars line up the best? For the colored channels, you will be adding the new values on top of the current values in the H01 row under their respective channels. After a full inspection, every channel ends on zero for the colors, which means we don't have to change anything for H01. Once you've completed this step, Go back to the control panel and click pause again to resume the printing. Now the printer will print the white channels. Same thing here, go channel by channel, looking for the number at which the bars align the best. After inspecting every channel, we see that consistently, every channel lands on one for the most aligned bars. Head back to the software, and for the weight channels, we will be inputting the new values into row H02, and under their respective channels. Since every channel is 1, and the current values are 0, 1 plus 0 equals 1. Once the new value is added for every channel, make sure to click save up top once again. For color adjustment, we do not do a second print since that would use up too much of the media. Once saved, click right adjust to print a new pattern for the right side. Reminder to click pause after channel 4 is printed. Then, after checking all the color channels, press pause again to resume printing the white channels. Then input all the values into the software. Like before, H01 for all channels was 0. For H02, all channels were positive 1, so we will add 1 to the current value of 0 to equal 1. Once completed, always remember to click save after any adjustments. Reminder, you are not putting the new value to replace the current value, you are adding the new value to the current value. This can be confusing since the current values are zero. So for example, if the current value was minus two, and your new value is one, then your new value, since you are adding the two values together, should be negative one. All right, moving on to the final procedure, bidirectional adjustment. Click Bidirect Adjust on the left navigation bar. Now click Print Adjust. This will print the bidirectional pattern. Besides, Headspace Adjustment, Bidirectional Adjustment is the next most important adjustment to be made. Your printer will constantly be printing bidirectionally, which means that the printhead is laying down ink when it moves left and also when it moves right. This means that the adjustment has to be dead on so that it does not cause blurry images.
After close observation, luckily, the most aligned bar is already on zero. If it was not on zero, then, just like before, you will take the new value and add it to the current value which is 5 zero, then just like before, you will take the new value and add it to the current value which is 5. Again, after any adjustments, make sure to click save. After all adjustments are completed, it is very important to back up your settings so that you don't have to repeat this process again. Head up to advance, in the password section, type in six ones and click confirm. Before moving on, go ahead and designate a folder where you would like to save the backup. Once ready, in the new window, go to firmware and click export firmware configuration. Now find the folder that you want to save this in. Name the file. Then click Save. Once saved, click OK. Now go back to Firmware, Export the Firmware Configuration Parameter. Now do the same and save this file. Now close the window. You are now done with all the adjustments. Note, there are two instances in which you may have to redo all of these adjustments. 1. If you use a new media in which the thickness is different now, the distance between the media and the printhead changes, and you will have to do the adjustments again. 2. If you install a brand new printhead, all the alignments may not be the same anymore, so you will have to do the adjustments again. Alright to finish off, you can push the down arrow until the printed media is clear of the printer bed. Cut the excess off. Then replace the cover to the printer carriage and secure it by tightening the screws. Next, place the cover back onto the motherboard and secure it by tightening the screws. Now close the lid and secure it by using these two screws. Alright, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.